I'm Chef Cody, and welcome to Catch the Spirit. We're here at Orfila Winery. We're doing some really nice food. We're gonna start with a really nice shrimp kebab salad. And we're serving that with a 2007 Ambassador Reserve Chardonnay and a 2006 Estate Ambassador Reserve Merlot. You guys are gonna really enjoy this. We're doing a really, really nice homemade, done right here on the spot, Cherry's Jubilee. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get started with a nice salad dressing and then we're gonna move on from there and uh, work on the shrimp kebabs. First, what we're going to do is we've got some lemon here, quick zest on the lemon. I cheat, I'm using a knife because I know exactly how far to go on the zest. Where most people would wanna use a zester or a potato peeler or something of that nature. I'm an old fashioned guy. I hate tools. And you know, anyone who hasn't been out here, it is gorgeous. I mean, you guys really have to take a look at the scenery around here. It is unbelievably gorgeous. Okay, I've got a little bit of lemon zest here that I'm working with. And knife. I'm just going to do a sh quick julienne. There we go. Then let's just go ahead, juice of, I'm gonna use one and a half lemons right here. And then I've got my herbs all mixed together. We've got a little bit of chives here and some basil. A little bit of sugar. And then, if you guys aren't familiar with this balsamic, I don't know if you can find it locally. This actually comes from Italy. And, uh, my wife was there a couple months ago and she brought this back for me, so. But uh, it's the best balsamic you're ever going to see. And I've got some salad oil here. And of course, I like the best grape upon you could ever use also. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little grape upon in this salad dressing as well. And that was about a quarter cup of grape upon mustard. And then just pour slowly, do a, a light drizzle. And then here we go again. Now what we have here is olive oil and salad oil. We have equal amounts of both. And then we're just going to add the balsamic. Now I know this looks dark. Most people expect a lemon vinaigrette to look light, but you're gonna love the combinations here of the flavors. I'm gonna go with a little bit more oil. Then we got some salt and pepper we're working with. Black pepper. and sea salt. There we go. Then we're gonna go with the Ophelia uh, Chardonnay. We're gonna just incorporate that slowly. 
And you want the wine to be raw. There's a reason for that. The rawness of the winery, of, of the wine, is really going to accent the help with the balsamic. And you're going to get a little bit of a sweet sour type of thing. It's going to be really interesting. Okay, now, let's go ahead and pour this into the bottle. There you go. Okay, now, that's done. And that's how you do this beautiful lemon vinaigrette with uh, a nice balsamic and the Ophelia a Chardonnay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the marinade real quick for the shrimp kebabs. We're going to start with a little bit of Chardonnay again. I'm just going to put this wine here, the Pinot. A little bit of Chardonnay again. Then we're going to go with olive oil. I'm just going to put that in. And I like to cheat. You won't see this in the recipe, but I like to put a little brown sugar in here. Ooh. It really freaks people out, but you'll taste when you taste it, you'll understand why. And all you people oh, yeah. out there in TV land, you didn't hear that. <laughs> That's just for the people here. And then we have our herb medley. If you're unfamiliar with these herbs that I'm using, I'm actually using an herb combination called Herb de Provençal which I actually make myself. And Herb de Provençal is just a combination of different herbs that you put together. It's nothing special. But right now what I have here is a little bit of chives, some powdered garlic, and uh, some basil that I actually put together myself. Now, what we're going to do now that we have the marinade done is I'm going to take the shrimp and start skewering. Now for all you people out in TV land, I actually wrote down four shrimp per serving, two per skewer. But for the people here, I'm going to give them a little treat and put a few extra shrimp oh, on yeah. there. Right. But don't tell anybody. And then these shrimp are beautiful. These are U1620 shrimp, and they are really, really nice size. Now, I've got some red pepper here. I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick slice, slice. And whenever you're working with peppers, if you remove the rib, you'll get rid of the bitterness and also you'll get rid of the hotness if you're working with hot peppers. It's one of those tricks that nobody tells you about. <laughs> then I've got a little bit of onion here. And I'm just going to use a whole quarter onion there. You'll see on the recipe I'm saying cut the onion, a medium sized onion into eighths, but we don't have to do that here. Then we got lemon, and I'm just going to use a quarter lemon and some zucchini. And I'm going to grab a couple skewers here. Now, the reason why I'm kind of cheating on the shrimp and giving a couple extra is because I'm going to do this really nice double folded skewered shrimp. Actually, I'm going to start with the onion first. So when you see this in a store, don't be intimidated by it. All it is is you're just twirling the shrimp like that. It's really simple. Then we've got some red pepper, a little bit of zucchini. And then two more shrimp.
There we go. And then we're just going to finish it with a lemon, like so. And I'll show you why that lemon is so important in a little bit. You guys are going to really enjoy that. There we go. Then you shrimp again. Now, the idea of cooking these shrimp is really easy. You're just going to cook them till they're pink, and then you're going to just let them rest for a few minutes, and they'll cook the rest of the way on their own. Most people overcook seafood. Personally, I prefer my seafood cooked medium rare to medium. And uh, most people, if you, if you see it in a restaurant, most people are, are surprised to see a little pinkish in their seafood. But quite frankly, that's when you're going to get the maximum flavor. And then I've got a little brush here. And we're going to brush these. Normally, I would allow these to marinate for approximately an hour. But... We got a little bit of TV action going here, so we're gonna just act like these marinated for an hour. <laughs> Steve, can I take an hour break and come back if the these are marinated? No. Okay. Okay, then we're just gonna put these on the barbie like so. And then I'm just gonna move this marinade to the back. While we got these shrimp, working. I'm going to bring up our first guest, Ben, and he's the tasting room manager. And that's actually a perfect thing because he'll get to taste these shrimp and tell us how he, what, how he thinks they are. Okay, come on up, Ben. So, come on back. Jump on in here. Yeah. We can do that. Okay. So, Ben, while these shrimp are cooking, Tell us more about what's going on at Ophelia Winery. Well, of course, as always, like every day, we do have wine tasting going on every day. So anybody can come in and taste our wines, you know, like the Pinot Noir Report today, the Chardonnay, as well as Merlot. We've also got about 10 other varieties that we go along with that as well, uh, to include a beautiful Vignet that we grow here on the estate as well. We've also got Riesling, Kvartsmeter, Muscat, Sangiovese, which is done on the estate as well. And we also do a couple of different varieties of Syrah as well. Excuse me one second. If you look over here real quick, you'll see that the shrimp are starting to brown a little bit. And we're also starting to get a little color on the vegetable. And now, this is a great opportunity to just do a quick... Mm. And don't worry about that flame. That flame's a good thing. <laughs> we got a little bottle of water here. And we'll just douse out the flame real quick. And then let's just close that up again. And as you can tell, I'm working on the salad mixture right here that we're going to. And in case you haven't noticed, I put a little lemon on the bottom. There's a reason for that. And I think you guys are going to be really impressed with what we do with that in a minute. And now we've got some onion here. And I'm just going to put one here and here. And a little bit of red pepper. These shrimp are just about done. And you get to do a quick taster. Oh, that's going to be rough. <laughs> this is your plate, boss. See, if you're a guest, you get to try some of the food here uh, that I'm actually cooking here. But actually, everyone in the audience gets uh, to have lunch with us today. We're actually doing this at 9 o'clock in the morning. But this show's going to air September 12th. So, after September 12th, tell me about some of the upcoming events that you have available, coming. Well, we're going to do a couple things coming up in uh, kind of our Friday night um, showings that we do. Once, once a month, we'll, do, we'll pick a Friday on there. And I'm going to do recommend that we all everybody check the website for the exact dates on these. But we're going to be having an upcoming chocolate pairing. So we'll be tasting uh, pairing wines with, uh, with chocolates. Oh, really? And then we'll also be doing one of the, uh, one of the house favorites is going to be our upcoming 80s night where we just turn up the 80s music and pour wine. And we taste wine all night. So. And uh, we've kind of had a string of those, and they've been really good for us. And it's coming back by popular demand. Are you playing Prince, or are you playing somebody else? Well, you're coming, so we're going to let you be the DJ that night. OK, great. You guys listen to Prince all night long. The Friday thing sounds nice. 
Uh, what other events do you have coming up? Well, when we have our one of our premier events that's coming up in, that'll be in November, and that's the weekend right before Thanksgiving. It's November 20th, 21. And that is where we release our reserve Merlot. So you're cooking with that tonight, today. Yeah. And we do the next vintage that we're going to release. So the 2007, we do a big release party on that one. And that's kind of a big premiere event. We do it. We dip in the library for some older vintages that night. Oh, really? um, as I can see in the audience, I know quite a few of these folks have come before. So, <laughs> um, and that winds up, we do hors d'oeuvres here on the patio. We also go into the tent that night where we do um, four courses all paired with our wines as well. And we also got a great jazz vocalist band that comes as well. And who's that? Band name is uh, Rhythm of Life. Uh, they're a jazz vocalist band. Okay. Um, phenomenal. And um, we look forward to them having them here every year. Okay. Now, these shrimps should be perfect. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. That looks good. Now, we're just going to put this on the board for a second and try not to lose it. Oh, man, that's perfect. We're just going to get rid of the burnt part real quick of the skewer, and we're going to just, this is an old trick that you'll see in a lot of restaurants, and it makes for a very nice presentation, just to stand up like so. Wow. And then, so you get one standing, and then we're just going to lean the other one up like so. So you get this towering of shrimp kebab. Woo! Okay, we're going to take some pictures real quick, and then who's going to do the taste? Okay, now we've got the salad dressing here, which is the lemon vinaigrette. And we're just going to pour a little of that around like so. Now. The reason why we did the uh, lemon like this, and you guys are going to be really surprised to see this, but this is the perfect time to just squeeze that lemon and have it all run down like that. Because now we're just going to squeeze that lemon and just have it run down all this at the same time like that. I'm going to go ahead and sit this down so we can get our taste test. And tell me exactly what you think. You get silverware? I got Perfect. silverware. I'm ready. Okay, go for it. <laughs> Salad is excellent. Glad you're enjoying it. Just go ahead and... This, this is finger food, man. <laughs> Come on, don't be afraid of it. All right. You talk me into it. That is excellent, Chef. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Chef. And we'll talk to you in a little bit. Have Actually, it. let's sit down and have some of this a little bit later when I right. get done. Beautiful. <laughs> How would you like to have Chef Cody cook for you? Food is prepared on site by award-winning personal chef service, Manhattan Catering. Available for breakfast, lunch, and dinner in your home or at your office. You choose the menu. Ask about our personal cooking classes. The world's finest cuisines are available to you by calling 760-587-8939 or visit ManhattanCateringLLC.com. My name is Bruce Antonoff, owner of California Chauffeur Corporation. We'll take you to your destination in style. Why struggle with airport parking? California Chauffeur provides personal, non-stop ground transportation. Call today, 619-252-5244.
do a really, really nice Sherry's Jubilee, and we're going to be utilizing the 2006 Merlot, which is one of the best wines that I've tasted here. And because I'm getting tired and I don't feel like working all day, I'm going to bring Don over. He's one of the winemakers here, or the executive winemaker here. And uh, we're going to let him make the Cherry's Jubilee as he tells us more about this wine and some of the other wines that he has. Right. Come on over, Don. So this Merlot, it's got that really nice bite that is really going to bring out the flavor. The cherries are really going to help bring out the flavor. Yeah. Plus, it's got that oak that really solid oak backing. Exactly. And that's going to work really well with the brandy. So that's why I wanted to do the yep. Cherry's Jubilee with it. I knew you would remind me. That's right. I was sitting here going, <laughs> what was I thinking about? But um, anyway, I'm going to do one crepe real quick. And I actually made the crepe batter earlier today. But for the camera, here we go right here. Simple crepe. And I got a little bit of heat going here. And then we've got butter. And that's nice and hot. We are going to do some lemon zest, I mean some orange zest, excuse me. And I cheat. I hate using culinary tools. I just like knives. I grew up, I actually started working with an old, old German chef. And he had two things in his pocket. He had a paring knife and a corkscrew. And that's all he worked with. So. <laughs> that's all you need. That's all you need. So um, anyway, so tell me about that, uh, the, uh, what's the actual, and I do want the actual recipe. For your uh, for your Chardonnay, Chardonnay. Well, this is uh, this is our Ambassador's Reserve Chardonnay. It's yeah. actually from uh, Edna Valley, which is uh, up in kind of central coastal California, and because that's probably one of the best areas uh, on the west coast to grow Chardonnay. So we actually source the Chardonnay from there, because here in San Pasquale Valley we're a little bit warm, um, which is great for our state vineyards and the varieties we grow here. But for Chardonnay, uh, we source it from where the fruit grows best. And really? uh, yep, that's it. So it's uh, the best of the reserve is barrel fermented, uh, Surly's aged. So it's you know the big, rich, traditional California Chardonnay. And we're gonna just go ahead and add a little brandy. Steve, come in close so you can get this flame. Oh, yeah. And we're just gonna flame it. Mm -hmm. nice. You got that? And then we're going to take some of the Merlot. And we're not going to put the flame out. We're going to let the flame go out naturally. And then we're just going to add a little bit of Merlot to that. Now, you guys are going to say, God, why are you adding so much wine? It's really not that much alcohol. Everything's going to cook out. All the alcohol is actually going to cook out. And you're actually going to have the essence of the flavor. So as far as the brandy is concerned and the wine is concerned, I want you guys to really taste the product. But you're not going to have the alcohol that you, that you see me pouring in. And then we're going to scrape the vanilla bean like so. And I'm only using a half of vanilla bean. And then we're going to add all of this nice vanilla right in there. Get that going. And then I've got some cinnamon here. And we're going to sprinkle a little cinnamon like so. And then we got this crepe ready to go. Now, the secret to crepes... Everybody always says use a spatula when you turn it. You're better off if you just use your hand, okay? And that's how you can really tell when the crepe is perfect. We're gonna do a quick flip, bring it out, fold it over. Now, it's very important that you can actually see that I'm serving a warm crepe with ice cream. A lot of people are normally surprised to see that. I like the warm and the cold combinations, the textures, and how it plays with the tongue. And also with the wine, you're going to find that that's really interesting. We're going to scoop up some ice cream, like so. 
We'll put the ice cream right there like that. Here, and we're gonna go really light with the cherries because you don't, you won't need a whole lot. Wow. And just put a few cherries there and a little sauce over the ice cream. Oh. Like so. And this is a really light dessert. We're in California, so we don't do anything heavy here. Everything's light and delicate and stuff like that. Now, if I was in Wisconsin or in New Orleans, this would be in a bowl about this big. <laughs> and that would be one serving. But here in California, we do everything light and delicate. And this is how you prepare the perfect cherries jubilee with wow. crepe wow. and vanilla ice cream. Looks great. Okay. Mm. Oh, wow. Yes. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> have, you, have his eyes glazed over yet? Mm. Oh, that's a, just amazing. Now, the combination Perfect. together, Perfect. you can see what I'm talking about, about you're bringing out the oakiness of the wine. Yep. And you're not really intimidating it. It's just nice and smooth. Can I have some? Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm Look, just the wine kidding. and the cherry. <laughs> <laughs> Flavors there match so well. And with the wine, because, uh, you know, one thing about Merlot has a lot of cherry character to it, a lot of mm -hmm. black cherry. And so that matches really well. And one thing that a lot of people don't talk about with wine pairing is the acidity and the pH of the foods versus the wine. Exactly. And with this, the acidity and the pH is so well balanced on the plate and goes so well with the wine. It's just an amazing combination. That was definitely the right choice, Chef. Thank you very much. I'm glad you're enjoying yeah. it. Well, thank you all very much for coming. And what was that you were about to say? I'm sorry. I think I cut you off. Oh, I had a little, I uh, just wanted to give you a little gift. Uh, then say thank you for coming today. And uh, enjoy oh. it. This is a brand new, nobody has this wine in the world yet. Just bottled it this week, and you get the first bottle of it. Wow. Really? That's the 2000. That's the 2007 Ambassadors Reserve Merlot. Thank you very much. I really appreciate well, it. Thanks for coming. It's our pleasure to be here. And I'm going to go ahead and get these shrimp off because they're about to go. And I'm going to feed all these wonderful people out in the audience. And we'll see you next week.